Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? Hope everybody is doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. And guys, today in this lesson, we are going to master different parts of a sentence. It is vital for us to know what we have in a sentence, right? Different types of subjects. What is a subject? Different types of subjects. What is a predicate? Different things we have in a predicate. We'll master everything about it, all right? So make sure you watch the video until the end. All right. Now let's start with understanding what exactly a sentence is in English. What is a sentence? Guys, a sentence is a group of words or a combination of words that has a certain meaning, that has a certain meaning to it, that has a particular meaning. All right. So a sentence uh, basically contains two main items, two main elements that are subject and predicate. Now, what is a subject? What is a predicate? Let's talk about them. Let's master them one by one. Let us start with the first one, subject. What is a subject? What comes to your mind when you hear the word subject? Subject is something that is the most important thing of that matter, right? So a subject is something or somebody that the sentence revolves around. The sentence is about the subject, right? It gives information about the subject. So a subject is either a person that performs an action can be a thing, but when it performs an action, it is generally a person, right? It can also be somebody that is a person or something that is a thing, which the sentence simply gives information about. There is no action happening in the sentence. The sentence simply gives information about the subject, either renames the subject or simply modifies it, describes it with an adjective or a prepositional phrase, right? This is what a subject is the most important part of a sentence, right? Let's uh, take some examples and understand this. Example number one, Rahul sings. Rahul does something which is singing, Rahul sings. So in the sentence, the subject is Rahul and the predicate is sings. Now what is a predicate? Let's understand this. Guys, uh, leaving the subject of a sentence, what you're left with is your predicate. So. Uh, leaving the subject of a sentence, whatever you are left with is your predicate. So here, Rahul is the subject, a person that performs an action and sings is a verb that is also a predicate, right? Subject, Rahul, predicate, sings. Rahul performs this action. Second example, John is living in Canada. John is living in Canada. So here, John is doing something, not really physical, but he's performing an action, which is living. So John is the subject of the sentence and is living in Canada is your predicate. It's your predicate and John is the subject. In the first example, Rahul is the subject and sings is the predicate. Third example, Rahul is my English teacher. Rahul is my English teacher. Is there any action happening in the sentence? Ask yourself. No, there is no action happening. We're simply giving information about Rahul. Rahul is not doing an action here. Rahul is being renamed. We are giving another name. We are basically giving a name to Rahul, which is my English teacher. Rahul equals to my English teacher. So here, Rahul is your subject and is my English teacher is your predicate. All right, last example. John is talented. John is talented here. The subject is John because we are talking about him and the predicate is is talented and John is not doing anything. We are just describing John. John is being described here, right? Using an adjective. How is John? John is talented, right? So the subject either performs an action which is happening in example number one and in example number two or uh, it basically gets described or renamed which is happening in example number three and example number one. Example number four. Now, it can also be a thing. We haven't uh, taken an example where a thing is working as the subject, but it can, obviously. For example, India is beautiful. India is beautiful. So here, India is your subject, which is a thing, right? My company uh, gave me huge bonuses or my company gave me a good post my company gave so here the company is doing something so it's acting like a person right so a thing can also do an action so this is what a subject is it either performs an action or the sentence simply gives information about it. now 
we have different types of subjects yes number one simple subject number two compound subject and number three complete subject it is very important for us to know all these three types of subjects how they work and how to identify them right all right let's start with the very first one a simple subject as the name goes a simple subject is actually a simple subject it is just a one word subject without the modifiers so a simple subject is a one word subject it is a one word subject that means it does not include it does not have any modifiers this is what a simple subject is it is generally a word can be more than a word can be two or three words but it's not going to include any modifiers even if it has more than a word it is going to be one word the the in the combination of all those words is going to be one word all right let's take some examples and understand this india is the biggest democratic country in the world so we're giving information about something which is india right india is there's no action happening here india is the biggest democratic country in the world so here india is the subject and is the biggest democratic country in the world is your predicate is your predicate right and we are basically giving information about india we are giving it a name the biggest democratic country in the world all right it is just a name without any modifiers without any adjectives example number two jacob loves pancakes jacob loves pancakes so here jacob is the subject because we're talking about an emotional state of the subject which is jacob jacob loves what pancakes so jacob is the subject and loves pancake is your predicate so here jacob is a simple subject it is just a name it does not have any modifiers similarly india is a simple subject in the first example example number three the man in the white coat is a doctor the man in the white coat we're talking about this guy who is the doctor the man in the white coat this is the complete subject but the simple subject here is men this is your simple subject as it does not include any modifier the complete subject is the men in the white coat it is the simple subject plus all the words that modify it right so this is what a simple subject is now note this it doesn't have to be just a word it can be more than a word but even if it has more than one word the combination is not going to have any modifiers the entire combination is going to work as a name just one name all right for example new delhi is the capital of india new delhi is a proper name just one name without any modifiers justin bieber is my favorite singer here justin bieber is a simple subject it does not include any modifiers so a simple subject doesn't have to be just one word which it generally is but it doesn't have to be simply a word it can be more than a word but it will not include any modifiers all right now moving to the next type of a subject which is a compound subject compound so a compound subject is a combination compound compound is a combination of two or more subjects more simple subjects or complete subjects generally simple subjects and it's generally a combination of two subjects right and it is joined generally by coordinating conjunctions such as and and or generally all right let me give you some examples john and max came to see me the other day john and max we have two simple subjects john and max and we combine them using this coordinating conjunction and here we have a compound subject john and max john and max came to see me the other day all right second example the teachers or the management can solve this problem the teachers or the management so here we have this subject right which is not a simple subject it's a complete subject and then we have the second subject which is the management which is again not a simple subject right so we are adding two subjects with this conjunction or here we have a compound subject the teachers or the management can solve this problem that example some green vegetables some green vegetables milk sugar and flour are needed for this dish so here we have four simple subjects 
uh, the first one is not a simple subject, but the rest of them are simple subjects. So we, here we have four subjects joined together with this conjunction and, right? So we generally join two or more subjects using the conjunction and or or, but we can use some other correlative conjunctions as well, such as not only X, but also Y, not only this, but also that both and both a and b uh, neither x nor uh, y either x or y for example so let me give you some examples neither the doctors nor the patients were happy with the ongoing protests neither the doctor neither x nor y nor the patients were happy with the ongoing protests right so neither the doctors nor the patients is your compound subject both the police and the protesters are working together. Both X, which is the police, both the police and Y, the protesters are working together. Here you have a compound subject, which is both the police and the protesters. Not only X, which is my parents, not only my parents, but Y, which is I, not only my parents, but I am also in support of this rule. Now remember this. If you use either or or neither nor to form the subject, the main verb follows what comes after nor and or. Neither the doctors nor the patient is happy, nor the patients are happy, right? Neither the doctors nor I am happy. Neither I nor the doctors are happy, right? Either the doctors or I am. Either the doctors or we are, right? So uh, what comes after nor and or uh, in, in compound subjects is what the main verb follows, right? The last one, complete subject, as the name goes, it is complete. A complete subject is a combination of a simple subject and the words that modify it. So it is a simple subject plus all the words that give information about it, right? All the modifiers. Let me show you some examples. Example number one. Some people just make excuses for their failures. Some people, and they really do. Some people just make excuses for their failures. So here, some people is your complete subject. CS, let's just call it CS, right? Where people is your simple subject. It is your simple subject, one word subject, right? Right? And uh, some people is your complete subject because some is a modifier, which is giving information about people, right? Some people just make excuses for their failures. Second example, people living in this area are very poor. Who are poor? People living in this area. So this is your complete subject, people living in this area, right? Where people is your simple subject and people living in this area is your complete subject. Here, living in this area, this part, living in this area is a present participle phrase which is modifying the subject the simple subject people right people which people living in this area who are living in this area are very poor right complete subject people living in this area are very poor that example the men in the blue coat teaches history here who teaches history here the men in the blue coat the men in the blue coat this is the person we're talking about this is the guy who teaches history here so what is your simple subject here? It's men. Men is your simple subject and the man in the blue coat is your complete subject. So we have a pre-modifier which is modifying men, the man, referring to a particular man and then you have a prepositional phrase working as an adjective modifying the simple subject man. The man in the blue coat. Who is in the blue coat, right? So this is what a complete subject is. Now the question is how can you form a complete subject? There are three ways to form a complete subject. Number one, using a pre-modifier plus the simple subject. Number two, using a simple subject plus a post-modifier. Number three, using both a pre-modifier, then the simple subject, and then a post-modifier. Now the question is, what is a pre-modifier? What is a post-modifier? Let's get to know them. What is a pre-modifier? A pre-modifier is a modifier, is an adjective that comes before a noun and modifies the noun. And what do we have in a pre-modifier? We basically have determiners and adjectives. Now, 
Under determiners, we have the following things. We have uh, quantifiers, we have articles that include both definite and indefinite articles. Then we have uh, demonstrative adjectives. Then we have possessive adjectives, right? All these things are determiners. And then you have adjectives. Adjectives can also come before a noun and modify. So when you have a pre-modifier, it's either going to be a determiner or going to be an adjective. Or it can also be a combination of both. You can have both a determiner and adjective as well. Now, in a post modifier, what is a post modifier? It's an adjective that comes after a noun. It's something that modifies a noun and sits next to it. Now, what can be a post modifier? It can be a participle, it can be a participle phrase, it can be a prepositional phrase, it can be an infinitive phrase, it can be an adjective clause, right? So, all these things things you see on the screen can function as a post modifier right let me show you some examples number one pre modifier plus simple subject a man came to see me yesterday a man who came to see me a man man simple subject a determiner you can use some other type of a determiner uh, your brother came to see me yesterday brother simple subject your determiner pre modifier your brother this man came to see me yesterday. This man, right? Some people came to see me yesterday. Some quantifier. You can also use an adjective after it. For example, this beautiful person came to see me yesterday. This amazing person came to see me yesterday. You can also use an adverb before the adjective to, to uh, intensify it or, or to limit its meaning. For example, this amazingly beautiful girl came to see me yesterday, right? So, this is the first way to form a complete subject, a pre-modifier plus a noun, simple subject. Second way, simple subject plus a post-modifier. Examples, people of this country are amazing. People of this country, which people of this country? So people, simple subject of this country, prepositional phrase working as an adjective, modifying the simple subject people. People of this country are amazing. Second example, people living in this area are very educated. People living in this area are very educated. Again, people, simple subject, living in this area, a present participle phrase, modifying the simple subject people, right? And uh, people living in this area, this is your complete subject, right? Uh, you can also use an adjective uh, clause. People who came to see me yesterday uh, were very rude. People who came to see me yesterday. So this is your complete subject. People who came to see me yesterday, right? Third case, pre-modifier, then the simple subject, then the post-modifier. Examples, the girl who is looking at us is very rich. The girl who is looking at us is very rich. Which girl? The girl, pre-modifier, definite article. The girl who is looking at us, this is an adjective clause, modifying the simple subject. So we have both. A pre-modifier, which is the, and a post-modifier, which is an adjective clause. You can reduce it to a present participle phrase as well. The girl looking at us is amazing. Another example, the goal of my life is to help people. The goal of my life, this is the complete subject, and the simple subject is goal. We have a pre-modifier, which is the, the goal of my life, a prepositional phrase working as a post-modifier, right? Uh, you can visit my website www.englishwithashish.com we have a lot of examples there right so you'll see all these cases with a lot more examples here is the post i'm talking about right uh, the link is in the description check this post on my website go through it and you will know everything you need to know all right now what can be a subject is something we should know what can be a subject what qualifies to be a subject can anything be a subject no not anything in, in, in english language can be a subject then what can be a subject? So it can be a noun or a noun phrase. It can be a noun clause. It can be a pronoun. It can be a gerund. It can be a gerund phrase. It can be an infinitive or an infinitive phrase. All these things qualify to be the subject of a sentence. All these things can work as the subject of a sentence. Let's take some examples and understand how these things function as the subject of a sentence. Number one, noun. Money can't buy happiness. So money here is the simple subject. It's just a subject, all right? Working as the subject. And it's a noun, abstract noun. Respect is what we need from you. 
respect abstract noun respect is what we need from you so it's a noun it can be a noun phrase this house is so big this house noun phrase modifier plus a noun right this determiner house noun noun phrase your father is a cool guy your father your possessive adjective determiner father simple subject noun your father noun phrase so it can be uh, a noun phrase it can also be a noun clause yes it can for example what she's eating is not good for health i don't want to have it i suggest you don't have it too what she is eating can you see that what she's eating is not good for health right so i'm referring to something using a noun clause what she's eating a noun clause function functioning as the subject of the sentence who i'm seeing is is a model hey i heard you seeing somebody yeah i am who i'm seeing whom i'm seeing is a model so seeing here means dating all right right dating so who i am seeing is the subject of the sentence so a noun clause also function as the subject of a sentence now what else pronoun yes very simple a pronoun can also function as the subject of, subject of a sentence but it has to be a subjective pronoun for example i you we they a she right he i love teaching english he loves teaching english she loves teaching english they love teaching english right so i pronoun subject Everyone loves me. Everyone loves me. That is an indefinite pronoun. Someone loves me. Someone called me. Indefinite, right? Everyone loves me. So it can be a pronoun as well. The subject can be a pronoun as well. A gerund, yes. A gerund can also function as a subject. Now, what is a gerund? It is an ing form of verb, a progressive form of verb that functions as a noun. So if it's a noun, obviously it can function as the subject. Examples: Teaching is my passion. What is my passion? You ask. Get the answer teaching functioning as the subject of this sentence what is my passion ask teaching what can kill you smoking nobody's smoking nobody's teaching understand this these two progressive forms of verb are functioning as the subject smoking can kill you smoking regularly can kill you so it can be a gerund, gerund phrase as well teaching english is my passion i can add the object teaching english is my passion smoking here can kill you so it can be a gerund phrase as well all right infinitive yes two plus base form of verb this can also function as the subject for example to smoke can kill you to smoke so when it functions as the subject i mean we don't prefer it we instead uh, use a gerund so we will say smoking can kill you right instead of saying to smoke which is grammatically fine but we don't speak like that so yeah but it's possible to be calm is more important to do this task to be calm right again a gerund sorry infinitive phrase to plus base form of verb be to be calm infinitive phrase right to be calm is very important to do this so till now we've understood what a subject is different types of subjects how they look how they function how to identify them right what qualifies to be a subject so we've mastered the subject part now let's move to the next one predicate what exactly is a predicate guys a predicate is a part that gives information about the subject so it either indicates what the subject is doing or does or did or has done will do whatever tense it is in all right so it either indicates what the subject is doing right or gives information about the subject in terms of giving it a name or modifying it so uh it shows or indicates what the subject does in the sentence or simply gives information about the subject in terms of renaming it using a noun right or modifying it using an adjective now let's talk about different types of predicates we have in english number 1 simple predicate number 2 compound predicate and the last one complete predicate let's learn all these three types of predicates one by one let's start with the very first one simple predicate what is a simple predicate a simple predicate is a verb or a verb phrase which is a combination of an auxiliary verb and a main verb right so a simple predicate is just a verb the main verb or a verb phrase which is basically a combination of an auxiliary verb and a main verb this is what a simple predicate is it does not include the object of the verb or the complement complement of the verb or or any modifier right it is just a verb or a verb phrase 
Let me show you some examples and make you understand. Number one, I quit. I is the subject, simple subject. Quit is the predicate, simple predicate. Just one word, just a verb, main verb, quit. Example number two, Aman is working in his room. Aman, the subject, right? The subject is working. This is our predicate, simple predicate. Let's just call it SP, right? Aman is working in his room, right? Aman is the subject. Is working is our simple predicate. And is working in his room is our complete predicate, right? Third, we have left the job. We have left the job. V is the subject. The subject have left, which is a verb phrase, a combination of a helping verb, which is have, the main verb left. This is our simple, this is our simple predicate. This is our simple predicate, SP, all right? Last one. I should have listened to my father that day. I, subject, subject, should have listened is your simple predicate. I should have listened to my father that day. So I is the subject, simple subject, should have listened, simple predicate, should have listened to my father that day, complete predicate. So this is what a simple predicate is. Just a verb or a verb phrase without any object, modifier or any complement. Compound predicate. What is a compound predicate? A compound predicate is a combination of two predicates. Very important to note. This is a combination of two predicates. When you have two predicates, two verbs shared by the same subject, that means one person doing two things, you are talking about somebody performing two actions, you use a compound predicate. Instead of writing two different sentences, you just write one sentence with two predicates. And the combination of those predicates is called a compound predicate, right? And the compound predicates are joined with conjunctions such as and, or, and, but. These are coordinating conjunctions, right? And note that the actions here in the predicates are performed, are done by the subject here. One subject doing both the actions. Let's look at this example and understand the concept of a compound predicate. John comes here at 9 a.m. He leaves at 6 p.m. So we are talking about John, right? John is the doer, right? This is just one guy doing two different things. So he comes here at 9 a.m. and he leaves at 6 p.m. And both these actions are performed by the same person, which is John, right? So instead of forming two different sentences, talking about the same guy, we can have just one sentence where we have a compound predicate. So we'll say, John comes here at 9 p.m. at 9 p.m. and leaves, and I'll not say he leaves because it's obvious that He's performing the action and he leaves at 6 p.m. So we have two predicates. Number one comes here at 9 a.m. And then the second is leaves at 6 p.m. And these two predicates are joined by the conjunction and, right? John comes here at 9 p.m. and leaves at 6 p.m., right? Let me give you more examples. They will hire you or let you go. They will hire you. This is the first thing they'll do or conjunction, coordinating conjunction, let you go. This is the second action they'll do, right? They will hire you or let you go. Second example, Joanna fell off the roof and broke her foot. Joanna fell off the roof. This is the first thing that happened with her. She fell off the roof and broke her foot. So this is our compound predicate joined with the conjunction and coordinating conjunction. Another example, I wanted to help you but didn't have money. I wanted to help you but didn't have money. So, wanted to help you, this is our first predicate, right? Did not have money is a second predicate, right? And both these actions are referring to the same guy, same subject, I. I wanted to help you, I didn't have enough money. I didn't have money, right? So instead of writing two different sentences, I can just write one sentence and have two predicates, have a compound predicate. This is what a compound predicate is. All right. Now, what is a complete predicate? 
a complete predicate is a combination of a simple predicate just give me a second a combination of a simple predicate and its objects or modifiers or complements so the simple predicate and uh, the object of the simple predicate or the the complement or any modifier right the combination of a simple predicate and the objects or modifier or complements is your complete predicate let me show you some example it's very simple example number 1 john does what he wants to do john is your subject right this is your subject does is your simple predicate right and does what he wants to do is your this is your complete predicate right this is your complete predicate it has your simple predicate plus it has the object which is what he wants to do does what what he wants to do this is the object right so your compound predicate is the combination of the simple predicate which is does and the object of the action verb does which is what he wants to do second example you are free to go you subject subject are is your uh, simple predicate simple predicate but this does not form a complete sentence you are you got to say something about the subject you are you are what right so something has to be there the complement has to be there the subject complement right you are free to go so you is the subject are free to go is your complete predicate are is your simple predicate all right another example i have been doing this for a long time i is your subject have been doing this is your simple predicate and i have been doing this for a long time this is your complete predicate this is your complete predicate so have been doing a verb phrase doing what doing this so this is your object in this compound predicate we have the verb phrase we have the object we i have been doing what this for how long for a long time this is basically a verb phrase right a modifier so this is what a complete predicate is now let's understand what we have in a predicate what are the things we have in a predicate what are the things that we have in a predicate number one verb or verb phrase it can be just a verb or a verb phrase uh, an object can also be a part of a predicate sometimes it has to be in it right you cannot take it out i'll show you the time i'll show you when subject complement it has to be a part of a predicate if the verb is a linking verb i'll show you when and the last one object complement yes sometimes it is needed to complete a sentence to make it grammatical and to render the meaning you want to render now before uh, understanding all these types of predicates let's take some examples and see how predicates look like so it can be simply a subject and a verb for example we eat here we is the subject and eat is the predicate a verb right it's a complete sentence right it does not need anything it would be better if you use the object here we eat what the sentence would be better uh, if we added uh, the the object of the verb but without the object here the sentence is grammatically fine we eat or we sleep so here the verb is is the predicate right it does not have anything else it just a verb it can be a verb phrase for example um i have been speaking i have been speaking so here i is the subject and have been speaking is a verb phrase working not working is basically the predicate right it is the part that that you have apart from the subject right so have been speaking is the predicate which is basically a verb phrase right do you need any things to make the sentence grammatical no the sentence is already grammatical understand this you can form a sentence with just a subject and a verb or a verb phrase these are the two only things that we need to form a sentence but sometimes these two things are not enough we need more than that all right sometimes these two things are not enough to form a sentence right so the parts that are needed to form the sentence that time will also be part of the predicate next example rohan has your money rohan has your money so here rohan is the subject has is the main verb stated verb and your money is the object of the verb has now try reading the sentence without the object rohan has does it make any sense does it give you any meaning no it doesn't 
So here you need to have the object to make the sentence grammatical to have a particular meaning to to make the sentence render the meaning it want to it wants to render right so here your money which is a noun fix working as the object of the verb is necessary for the sentence to be grammatical right so here has your money is the predicate which has two elements in it has verb your money object right third example my father gifted me a phone my father gifted me a phone my father gifted is it all right yeah but it does not make any sense gifted what you can ask what so gifted whom me i received whatever i received what did i receive a phone so with some verbs we have both the direct object and the indirect object so here a phone is the direct object and me is the indirect object my father gifted what a phone to whom me so here my father is the subject and gifted me a phone is the predicate which has three things in it gifted main verb me indirect object a phone direct object next example you are beautiful you are beautiful so here you is the subject i is the main verb linking verb now can you complete the sentence without using the subject complement which is beautiful no you can sentence does not make any sense without the subject complement beautiful it is incomplete you are you are what it does not make any sense right so we need the subject complement so it's an essential part of a predicate you are beautiful i can uh, use a noun to re rename the subject for example you are my friend so you are what my friend subject complement we can also use an object complement sometimes an object complement is needed to give the meaning you want to give to make the sentence uh, grammatical for example we consider him a good fighter we consider can you just end the sentence here no you can it does not make any sense we consider what we consider him a good fighter so here a good fighter is an object complement right renaming the ob object him we consider him consider him what you consider somebody somebody right you consider him what a good fighter you consider him worthy so the object complement has to be there in order to complete the meaning and make sense right so all these things are predicates come under predicate all right now let's uh, master them one by one and before we do that it's very important to note that at minimum we just need a subject and a verb or a verb phrase to form a sentence right for example ron dances she sings we are working right these are complete sentences but sometimes we need more than that sometimes some other elements are needed to complete the set, uh, sentence like object like a uh, subject complement object complement right so we'll study all the elements one by one let's start with the very first one verb and verb phrase we all know what a verb is what is a verb it is a word that either indicates what the subject does or shows the state of the subject or links the subject to its complement now what is a verb phrase it's a combination of a helping verb also known as an auxiliary verb and a main verb let me show you some examples how verb phrases are a part of the predicate example number 1 ashish teaches amazingly so here ashish is the subject teaches amazingly is your predicate where teaches is the main verb it is a part of the predicate right teaches amazingly is your predicate and teaches here is a verb second example we failed we failed so here we is the subject and failed is your predicate it is an action verb uh it can be a stative verb as well for example we love this concept we is the subject love this concept is your predicate right is your predicate where love is your verb it's a stative verb right it can be a linking verb as well for example uh ron is my brother so here ron is the subject is my brother a predicate and is is the linking verb a type of a main verb right so it can be an action verb it can be a stative verb it can be a linking verb uh, as well it can be a verb phrase as well for example i have been teaching i have been teaching so here the predicate is have been teaching so have been teaching is a verb phrase right it can be you are 
you are doing well you are doing well so you is the subject are doing well is the predicate right and are doing is the verb phrase are auxiliary verb doing main verb so this is how a verb or a verb phrase is a part of the predicate the next element an object now what is an object an object now before we talk about what an object is there are two types of objects when we talk about an object we generally refer to the direct object so let's understand what a direct object is so an object i mean the direct object is a noun or a pronoun that receives the action it's something or somebody that receives the action right uh it is something or somebody the action is acted upon right the action is directly acted upon not all the action verbs have objects transitive verbs can have objects right so uh, sometimes it is needed it is absolutely essential it is necessary to have an object to complete the meaning of a sentence and note this that only transitive verbs can have objects not all verbs not intransitive verbs can have objects right let me show you some examples i have a lot of money now if i end the sentence here without mentioning this part i have what do you think is it complete does it have a meaning no it doesn't it doesn't have a meaning right so the sentence has to have an object in order to complete the meaning i is the subject have a lot of money is the predicate we have is the verb a lot of money is your object direct object i have what have what a lot of money right do you want do you want what if i went to you and i asked do you want how would you respond one what exactly my point you need the object which is my help do you want my help this is the object of the verb and here uh sorry my bad uh you is the subject and do want my help is the predicate it's an interrogative sentence question right another example my mother gave me a phone my mother subject gave me a phone predicate gave what a phone to whom me gave me what a phone right my mother gave gave what without the direct and indirect object the sentence does not have a grammatical meaning it doesn't look completed right it's incomplete my mother gave what my mother gave me a phone all right so this is how objects are a part of predicate and this is what they do next subject complement now what is a subject complement a subject complement guys is a word or a group of words can be a phrase or a clause that comes right after a linking verb and gives information about the subject it either we names the subject gives it a new name using a noun noun phrase noun clause or modifies it using an adjective adjective phrase or a prepositional phrase right and it is absolutely needed to complete the sentence to make it grammatical right you cannot avoid it you cannot eliminate it examples akriti was the head of my family akriti subject was the head of my family predicate was linking verb akriti was what the head of my family this is the subject complement a noun phrase giving a new name to the subject akriti was what the head of my family can you remove this part akriti was does it make any sense now no so the subject complement is essentially it, it's a part of the predicate all right you have been my backbone you subject have been my backbone predicate have been verb phrase right have auxiliary been main verb my backbone subject complement you have been what my backbone right subject complement rename it it can be an adjective as well uh, akriti was very strong predicate was linking verb akriti akriti was very strong right adjective phrase we are describing the subject using an adjective phrase it can simply be an adjective akriti was strong akriti was strong uh it can be a prepositional phrase as well akriti was uh with me akriti was with me akriti was in london it can be a prepositional phrase as well right so the prepositional phrase here is going to work as an adjective right subject complement you have been you subject have been loyal to me predicate you subject have been verb phrase loyal subject complement adjective right so this is how a subject complement is also a part of the predicate right and it is quintessential for the sentence to give a clear meaning a proper meaning right it's indispensable 
Next one, object complement. What is an object complement? It is something that gives information about the object. It completes the meaning of the object, direct object. And that is exactly why, my friend, we call it an object complement, right? Uh, it basically indicates what the object has become now, right? So like a subject complement, it either renames the object using a noun, phrase, noun clause, whatever, or it modifies it using an adjective, right? Modifies it. Let me show you some examples. Example number one, my friends call me a genius. Now, my friends is the subject, very clear, right? Complete subject, call me a genius, predicate, call verb, me, direct object, a genius, object, complement. Call whom, me, direct object, what? Now, this is not the action of calling, ringing, no. It's like to call, name, name, me, what? Right, a genius. So, it's me, me equals to a genius. It's not two different people, right? It's me. Uh, you can use an adjective as well. My friends call me a uh, beautiful right beautiful right second example my company subject complete subject made him the branch manager made verb him object him what branch manager made him you can also use an adjective made him upset so the object complement object complement refers to the current state of the object this is what the object has become now all right so this is what an object complement is. Again, visit my website, www.englishwithashish.com. We have posts on all these topics, right? In detail, right? So not all verbs can have, can take object complements. There are certain verbs, right? I have mentioned, I have, uh, uh, I have provided the list of verbs that can take object, object complements. So do visit the website, all right? All right, so. Now we know what a sentence is. Now we know what a subject is, right? Uh, what can be a subject, different types of subjects, how to identify it, what is a predicate, what do we have in a predicate, different elements, right? How they work, uh, what is at minimum we need in order to form a sentence. That is also we know, right? Sometimes that is not enough. We need an object. We've seen that we need subject complement. We need an object complement, but modifiers are not necessary, right? Adverbs are not necessary to form a sentence right so uh, you can always use them any way you want but they're not necessary and these items that I've shown you in the predicate these are necessary to give a proper meaning to make the sentence grammatical not always sentence subject complement always object complement always objects not always sometimes when you know all right now I have a task before you go uh, on your screen are some sentences. What you guys have to do is you have to break the sentences. You have to break the subject and the predicate. And within the subject, you have to tell me what that type is. What is the simple subject? What is the complete subject? Is it a simple subject, complete subject, or a compound subject, right? Similarly, you have to break down the predicate as well. You have to break down the elements you have in the predicate. And uh, the answers to these questions will be provided on the website, right? Uh, on this post you see on the screen right so make sure you visit the website after the video all right so hope it was a fun lesson hope it was very very informative hope now you know what a sentence is different types of subjects predicates right everything so if you learn something new like share new to the channel subscribe press the bell icon so that every single time i publish a new lesson you get notified and if you can do share with others so that they can also learn something new and it benefits me as well. So yeah, keep learning, keep sharing. I'll see you guys very soon. I'm out.